Um, mm. Look, Sarah, you've been doing a lot of uh, fantastic work. Uh, and I'm quite interested in this because you, this, the whole COVID thing, right? I was thinking um, th this was, it was as, as well as the many other victims of COVID, let's forget about them for the moment, as a comedian. <laughs> As a comedian, I was thinking the, pe the kind of people who were looking forward to the 2020 Edinburgh Fringe and thinking, this is going to be the fringe where, you know, my career massively takes off. You'd basically done the 2018, 2019, done really well with those two. And then were you, role, were you yeah. heading to 2020 to consolidate, consolidate that progress you'd made? Yeah, I, d I don't know if I was really thinking about it as like it was going to be a, a, a big year for me. Right. But I, di I did I did, want to, to at least make some money that year and that didn't happen. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that was a, it was a shame that yeah. it got cancelled. But I didn't have sort of any massive... I did have, I had a small plan. Um, like it was actually quite a big plan for the show that year because I was, had a, a bet with my friend where I was going to get carried on stage every day by a wrestler. <laughs> okay. uh, so that didn't happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, that was a dis disappointment. But you did... It's not the worst thing that happened It's not the year, worst thing, it? yeah. but it's sort of... I mean, it's interesting in terms of... Because it suddenly is like a year or two years sort of where not everything quite shut down, but where, you know, you're rolling along and then there's this dip and then you have to pick yourself up again, I guess, afterwards. Yeah, I, have, I will have to pick myself up at some, some point, at I some think. Point. Yeah, <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll get there eventually. Yeah, I mean, I think it, um, it, it knocked us all out a little bit. And I definitely, I think I was on a bit of a treadmill with comedy where I was like, I just do the next thing, do the next thing, do the next thing. And it has taken me a bit of time to work out how to, to kind of like figure out what I'm doing again now. Yeah. Um, but I think I, I am, I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> They're laughing, so <laughs> I think somebody like booed uh, <laughs> then. So that's a good, that's a good sign. Well, it did. It um, did I mean, a lot of things changed. So you were going to do quite a knockabout fun show, having done some quite serious shows about gender identity. And the plan was to do a silly show. Do a silly show. To get carried on stage by a wrestler, and the show was going to be called Lil Key's Big Jokes, and it was just going to be daft. It's going to be the daftest show we could possibly create. Yeah. And then I, uh, that didn't happen. And then my third show, what I eventually did this year, was. Really fucking miserable, actually. <laughs> it was a miserable show. It was, a good, it was a good laugh, but it wasn't a fun show. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, that, that, it's, it's quite interesting that that, changed, that it changed direction for you. You know, that again, partly COVID, but personal things in, happened in your life. And uh, yeah. you, you lost a good friend and the director of your show, Paul Byrne. Yeah. So he was the one I told yeah. I was going to get. He was the one who wanted me get, to get me carried on stage every day by a wrestler. And uh, so I talk about that on stage and I say we had this, I made him this promise that I was going to do that. And obviously now that, because I talk about him passing away because he died in February in the show and my experience with grief and things like that. I, t I told you it was miserable. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and so I say in the show, you know, it's, it's oh, bless you. Um, He's so allergic to seriousness. That yeah. Man. So, well, <laughs> strap in. Yeah, get yourself a Pyroton because we're going for it. Um, but uh, I did say in the show, you know, getting carried on stage every day by a wrestler when your life is going well is a, is a lovely bit of fun. But getting carried on stage every day by a wrestler when your life is falling apart is a distress flare in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite the same. I come out crying. It looks yeah. like I've paid a big, strong man just to hold me. So she just needs somebody with her the whole time. So. I, I would pay to see that show, I have to say. So yeah. hope, hopefully it's in there. Um, but you did do a Radio 4 show during lockdown, right? Which I would, I've listened to, Are You a Boy or a Girl? Yes. Uh, which yeah. I used to do this morning. And it's, you know, it's nice for, for 15 minute episodes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was really good fun because we did it in the BBC Radio Theatre. Yeah. But we did it with an audience on Zoom. Yeah. So I stood in an empty room and then we had live reactions from the, like they could see me and I could hear them. And there was like only like a split second of a delay. So it was like doing a real gig, but they weren't there, which was really, it was very strange. Yeah. But good experience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so what was, the, what was, what would you say the, what was, what were you att attempting to achieve with this, with this show, Are You a Boy or a Girl? It was, I mean, there was quite, it was quite a, a ambitious show for four, four, 50 minute pits up parts. I wanted it to be a, the show that somebody who is um, struggling with their gender identity could play to like their nan. Yeah. And be like, this, this is kind of what I'm going through. So very sort of entry level explanation as to what it is to be like 
queer or non-binary or not necessarily identify with the gender that people have been telling you you're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was very light-hearted and like fun yeah. and just very personal about my experience. Um, I'm, I'm trying to write a second series of it now. And let me tell you, in those in the two years since we recorded that one, the conversation has really kicked off. Um, <laughs> people are uh, more angry about it now. So I think the second series is going to have to be slightly more serious. Bless you. Um, <laughs> so, um, but we'll we'll fi we'll figure it out. But yes, yeah, so in, in the two years, I think um, I think around mid 2020 was when um, uh, she who shall not be named um, started sort of popping off on Twitter about trans people. Sure. And she really sort of uh, lit the fire under the, um, the the horrible debate about it now. So yeah, it has the world has changed quite significantly since I recorded that first series of that podcast, sure. uh, that radio show. Um, so yeah, it's going to have to be. Uh, I, just, I can't make silly jokes about fannies anymore. <laughs> I'm going to have to say something fucking smart, so we'll dig deep. If you've got anything, um, <laughs> I haven't got. Let me know. I haven't got much. Uh, whenever I've. The only time I've entered this debate was to say, um, surely we should just call people whatever they want to be called. It's polite. That was oh. my that was my tweet. Richard, you and, can't uh, say yeah. that. Oh, it was, it took don't about, tweet that. It took about twenty minutes for someone to accuse me of wanting to go into into a change room to look at teenage girls changing. As a result of that, so you're a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm keeping my I'm keeping stum about it. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to say a thing about it. I, I know Twitter is falling apart at the moment, but it's there, I don't think it's the best place for reasoned conversation. <laughs> is that a hot take? Should we call that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I've sort of tried, to, I've learned my lesson, I've been taught my lesson about uh, trying to, which is why having an opportunity to do things like a radio show and things like that is so lovely, is because you, you get to, nobody can interrupt me when I'm doing a radio show. Yes. I just get to say what I want to say and then put it out, and then the people who want to hear it can listen to it, and the people who don't want hear it can listen to it and then they can tweet me um <laughs> but yeah so it's um but i think as you say in the in the show I mean, which i was sort of surprised because you grew up in the 1990s and the early 2000s and so you would kind of hope this wasn't true but you were but obviously it was true that there were the, 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 the on the media there wasn't anyone you could really identify with as a as a kid that felt like you on tv no no i, I say in the radio show that when i was a, when i was a kid the only lesbian i knew of was joe brand and She's not a lesbian, so <laughs> she, she just had the haircut. <laughs> so I didn't know about anybody at all. Like, I had no, there was no, and I kind of, I, I, didn't, I missed the whole sort of Ellen DeGeneres thing. I wasn't really in touch with the, what was going on in America and stuff. So yeah. I didn't tune into any of it. I felt very, very isolated and alone when I was a teenager. And obviously teenagers now, like, with the the positive thing about social media is that you can find you can live in the smallest town in the smallest place and and you can find your community online you can, i could have gone online and googled queer people or masculine women or whatever and seen these pictures and videos and podcasts of people talking about those experiences whereas i just hadn't I, you know i had no idea i thought i was the only gay person in the world living in nottingham yeah. and i was like well i'm just you're just going to have to dig deep and pretend this isn't happening and um, and it's so it's really nice to just be able to like counteract that in some way and be a part of you know, positive uh, getting messages from people saying like I, this this radio show has been really influential to me and I've come out to my family or I've played it to my mom or I've played it to my grandma and it's been really useful. It's just so it's so nice. And if I'd had that when I was younger, it would have cleared up a lot of stuff. Yeah, I don't remember the first time I heard about I think the first time I sort of saw like a gay storyline on anything was probably Sonia's kiss on EastEnders and that didn't go well I don't know if anyone remembers that but it was not well received for her um I think she was she was called some names right um so I wasn't sort of sat watching EastEnders with my mom thinking this is this is gonna be good yeah <laughs> yeah you know, I think things have moved on in in the comedy world, at least. You know, it does feel like that now that you know 
there's the, we're getting a, a certain like female voices, which is which is like ridiculous. But like in when I was starting in the nineteen nineties, there would have been you know Joe Brand and a few other women, yeah. and now it feels like we there's a much broader range of types of people and types of experience and. Yes. And it's a welcoming environment, hopefully, mainly. Now. Yeah, definitely. I think it is. I think that there is, there's some forces trying to drag us back a little bit at the moment. I think there's, a, there's some stuff online where people are trying to kind of... Uh, that's, the, that's the flip side of the internet, is that yeah. anybody can say anything about anything. But, the, yeah, the comedy industry is definitely better. But it's weird. Um, I said, I've said this before on other things, but like when I started doing stand-up, I identified as a lesbian comedian i don't necessarily identify with being female in any way but i was like i'm a lesbian comedian and i thought that a lot of the sort of legwork of gay rights and things like that and and being representing lesbians had been done you know i was coming like hot off the heels of susie ruffle jen brister zoe lyons they were all working and uh, i didn't feel like i was being particularly groundbreaking in being a lesbian comedian whereas now i'm a i'm a non-binary comedian and i'm having to do a bit of fucking introducing myself to people <laughs> and I didn't want to do that I, did, I, I, I didn't want to be a sort of a, a leader or, or anything like that I yeah. just I just wanted to come out and tell some jokes and stuff yeah so I'm yeah I'm having to kind of be one of the the first to come out and say yeah this is this is who I am and this is how I identify which is really fucking annoying <laughs> 